All right, here we go with 5.3. Changes in state, also known as phase changes. Okay, so we're going to, for changes in state, we're going to base everything that we do off of a heating curve and or a cooling curve. So first we're going to take a look at our heating curve. Okay, and the heating curve is temperature versus time is graphed while a substance is being heated at a constant rate. So if we look here at our heating curve, right, on the x-axis we have time. Okay, so as time goes on, we're adding heat at a constant rate. And on the y-axis here, we have temperature. So we can see overall, as we add heat, the temperature increases. All right, so let's label a couple of these things. All right, so here, between A and B, our matter is in the solid phase. Here from C to D, our matter is in the liquid phase. Here from E to F, our matter is in the gas phase. Now these lines are representing the phase change or the change in state as it changes here from a solid to a liquid and as it changes here from a liquid to a gas. So the easiest way to think about this is to think about it as good old H2O. So solid water is ice. Liquid water is just what we call water. So when ice becomes a liquid, what do we call that? Well, that is melting. All right, so our ice melts, becomes a liquid, keeps on heating up, heating up, heating up, heating up. Eventually, it turns from a liquid to a gas. Right? When you have a pot of water on your stove, you put the heat on, eventually what does it do? It boils. Okay, so here we can say boiling, or to get really technical, which is what we're going to need to do, vaporization. Okay, and there's a couple of other important things to note here, right? While we're adding heat while it's a solid, the temperature increases. While we add heat while it's a liquid, the temperature increases. While we add heat while it's a gas, the temperature increases. And this actually kind of just kind of goes on indefinitely. Shouldn't be a little dot there. But notice what's happening here from B to C and from D to E. The temperature is not increasing. So during a phase change, temperature stays the same. And this is critical to remember. Okay, During a phase change, the temperature is staying the same. So anytime we see a heating curve, you know, what's happening here? Well, if the temperature is staying the same, it means it's undergoing a phase change. Okay, so now a cooling curve is just everything going backwards. So here, we're allowing this to cool, or we're removing heat at a constant rate. All right, so we can still label everything the same, right? It's starting off as a gas, then it's becoming a liquid, then it's becoming a solid. All right, so now we think of the phase changes while cooling. When ice goes from a liquid, water, to a solid, ice, what do we call that? Well, we call that freezing. Okay? Now, this one, I don't know, students have a hard time remembering, but we just got to work on it. When it goes from a gas to a liquid, we call that condensation. condensation. But at the same time, we can see the same type of things happen on the cooling curve, uh, same things happen on the cooling curve that happen on the heating curve in that during the phase change, the temperature stays the same. All right, a couple of other key terms to remember. One, sublimation, and that's when a solid changes directly to a gas. And if you've ever seen dry ice, Right? It's called dry ice because it doesn't leave a puddle of water behind. That's carbon dioxide 
in its solid phase and it's really really cold and it goes right from that solid dry ice directly to becoming a gas it does not become a liquid the opposite of that is deposition when a gas changes directly to a solid okay so sublimation solid to gas deposition gas to solid now heat energy is a very important concept during this unit and we have to start to now think about the real correct chemistry and science terms when we deal with heat energy so exothermic is when energy is being released or given off now energy is being released or given off during freezing and condensation so as you know, as we go the other way boom 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 okay as it's going from a gas to a liquid it's because heat is being given off because a gas has more oh, sorry about that has more heat in it than a liquid which has less heat so our freezing and condensation are both exothermic now, endothermic is when energy is being absorbed or gained. And melting and boiling are exothermic. I'm sorry. And melting and boiling are endothermic. When dealing with phase changes, I find the easier one to remember is the endothermic, where heat is being absorbed, because it makes sense, right? If you have a pot of water on the stove, I know I can't draw, but here's a flame right the heat is going into the water the water is absorbing the heat and then it boils absorb in endothermic boiling that's how I remember which one it is okay so during phase changes temperature does not change now since temperature is the measure of kinetic energy that means during a phase change kinetic energy does not change Okay. However, potential energy does. All right. So as we're, let's say this is, uh, well, it kind of makes sense to say this is water because water has a melting point of zero degrees Celsius. Water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. So as we're adding heat, right here as the temperature is rising, the kinetic energy is also increasing because kinetic energy and temperature are more or less the same. Remember, temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy. Now here, while it's melting, the kinetic energy is not changing because the temperature is not changing. All right, question time. So you look at this substance. At what temperature will the substance boil? That's the boiling point. At what temperature will the substance become a liquid? That's the melting point. But you have to give the actual number and in degrees Celsius. The actual number in degrees Celsius. Between 55 and 90 degrees Celsius, the kinetic energy of the substance is increasing or decreasing. And at 90 degrees Celsius, the potential energy of the substance is doing what? All right, that brings us to the end, and I will see you guys in school.